Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. For today's video, I am going to be talking about the application process to the Savannah College of Art and Design and how I was awarded the Dean's Fellowship, which is a full tuition ride scholarship. So the first thing that you're gonna to want to do is go to the scad.edu forward slash admissions forward slash apply page and begin your application. From there, you are going to want to choose one of three categories. Either you are an incoming freshman, an incoming transfer student, or an incoming graduate student, which is what I was at that time. From there, you just follow an easy seven step process, which will ask you for your personal information, the campus you want to attend, which is either Lacoste, France, Savannah, Georgia, or Atlanta, Georgia, your curriculum, your education history, guardian information, additional information, summary, and pay. Now, when you submit a college application of any kind, undergraduate, graduate, or transfer, you have to pay an application fee. The application fee for SCAD is $100, and this is non-refundable. This is a fee that basically is just saying that your application was successfully submitted, and it's just a fee that you have to pay in order to um, apply. Once you finish that, you will move on to the next two steps. So you have to submit your transcripts via your advisor or a, a mail-in copy. I can't remember exactly what it is, but right when you finish, there's two little sections and one is to submit your official transcripts and then another is to go to slide room. Now this is the second application. It's very important that you fill out the slide room application. Now, once you go to slide room, you will choose from a specific category. So all of the majors are listed on slide room that require a portfolio submission. So I would go down to the MA slash MFA film and television um, section and then click on that. And then I would be able to preview all of the requirements that I need to submit on this website. On this website, when you are submitting through this application portal, you will submit things like your resume, your portfolio, you will answer different questions about why do you wanna attend SCAD, and there's a really cool question on there that's like, you know, aside from your test scores and GPA, do you feel like this like doesn't accurately represent who you are as a student and why you wanna to come to SCAD? So that's a pretty cool question um, because it's like, you know, not everyone tests very well or they may have had hardships, but you know, they're really committed to turning their life around and being a good student. So it gives you an opportunity to really explain why you wanna be in school, why do you wanna choose SCAD, and and what do you think that uh, you can add to the program and what can you take away from the program basically. Now, one of like arguably the most important pieces of submitting an application is your statement of purpose. This is basically a paper detailing, you know, your life story, why you want to choose the school. They don't want to hear things like, oh, you know, I've wanted to be a film student or an art student since I was a little kid and this and that. Like they don't want to hear those different types of things. But the statement of purpose is very, very important and something that you should spend a lot of time on. Now, this application in particular is $10 to submit. Um, and one important thing to note about SCAD is they do not accept fee waivers. So I know for a lot of programs, like if you're a McNair scholar, if you're a first generation student, if you are a non-traditional student, or if you're in the military, there's different things that either you could be a part of or that you um, fall underneath that would provide you with a free fee waiver. So in that case, it would wipe out that admissions fee um, for your application, your application fee. Um, but SCAD does not accept those. So for example, I applied to seven universities in total and all of the schools accepted my fee waiver for being either first generation, McNair Scholar, whatever have you. Um, but SCAD did not uh, allow it at the time. I think my application fee was $60 when I applied back in 2021. Um, but I still had to pay that outright, but it's funny because that's the school I ultimately ended up choosing to go to. But yes, you will not be able to use a fee waiver if you have one. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you do want to apply to SCAD, you will have to come out of pocket and pay for that um, original application fee and then the slide room $10 fee, totaling $110. Now, another thing about SCAD's um, application process is you are allowed to submit to SCAD throughout the entire year. There isn't an application deadline like most universities have. Now, it is important, however, that you apply at least 30 days before the, your respective quarter that you want to begin will start. So say you're starting in the fall, you wanna start in the fall, and fall starts September 12th. You're going to want to apply at least by August 12th. So that gives the financial aid office and FAFSA enough time to figure out how much financial aid you will get, and then from there to be able to make your decision if you want to attend or not. So 
you can apply throughout any time of the year. You can join in any respective quarter, whether that's fall, winter, spring, or summer. So like I said, SCAD operates on a quarter system, not a semester system. So we have 10 week periods versus the traditional 16 week periods. So you are allowed to come and start whenever you are accepted um, and you can apply anytime throughout the year, which is really cool. So the next thing is once you are accepted to SCAD, you will receive an email. So I recorded a video that you can also go check out on my page that was my reactions to being either accepted, declined, or waitlisted to universities for graduate school. And I was capturing, capturing my raw reaction to being accepted to these universities. And with SCAD, I received an email detailing that I was accepted to the university and it outlined the um, traditional scholarship that they were going to offer me to attend their university, which was, I think if I'm not mistaken, around $18,000. Um, keep in mind, SCAD's like a rough $60,000 a year to go to school. Um, so I kind of was feeling very discouraged because there, that was just not enough money for me to attend school. So after that had happened, you know, I was really excited I got accepted and then, you know, I was exploring other options. And then for me, what happened was I got a phone call from SCAD and they said, you know, hello, this is the Savannah College of Art and Design. Are you still interested in attending this university? And I said, you know, absolutely I am. I'm very interested. So she said, okay, well, we would like to schedule an interview with you for one of our scholarships, which is the Graduate Fellowship and the Dean's Fellowship. Now the Graduate Fellowship is a scholarship that awards so many students. I want to say it's 75% tuition. It might be 50. I'll have to double check on that, but it's either 75 or 50% tuition and it covers covers that for your duration of being a SCAD student. Now for the Dean's Fellowship, it is a 100% paid tuition scholarship. So this scholarship is for tuition solely, not housing or room and board. So from there, I was like, you know, that's great. And then we scheduled the interview. So a couple weeks later, I have this interview and to prepare for that, I went to my undergraduate's um, career resources department and scheduled mock interview. You know, I did a lot of research on the university, um, put together my questions. So this is very, very important. When you are doing an interview of whatever kind, a career interview, a graduate internship, uh, or an undergraduate internship or an app admissions interview or whatever interview you're doing, you want to make sure you do thorough research of the university and the people who are interviewing you, as well as coming up with solid questions to ask at the end of the interview. It's very important to remember that when you are interviewing, they are interviewing you, but you are also interviewing them. It's very important that you're getting as much out of it as they are for you. So if you have any questions, this is the time to do it. Um, this is the time to make sure, you know, is this the right place for me? Am I a right fit? You know, diversity, inclusion, multiculturalism was very important to me as an incoming graduate student. And I wanted to see their views on those topics. So kind of figuring out what's important to you as a student and then being able to ask them, what is the school's stance on these issues, on these topics? Um, you know, and getting as much information as possible, basically. So um, the impression that I am under is you cannot necessarily apply for the Graduate or Dean's Fellow uh, Fellowship, but how it works is they, con they contact you. So how they contacted me, they look at your portfolio, they look at your submission for your application, they look at your GPA, your letters of recommendation, they kind of look at you as an overall student and bunch it into one. Like it's great to have a great GPA, but if you weren't involved in your undergrad, or if you didn't have really good letters of recommendation, or if you're missing a specific aspect, I don't think those are the students are necessarily looking for. This is just from like my, view from like speaking to the admissions advisors and also consulting with other uh, fellows in my little cohort. Um, they're kind of looking for the whole package of a student and what you can bring to the school and then what you can provide to, you know, students coming in and then what you can also receive from the university. So that was the impression that I got. And then I was interviewed um, by these two lovely women who I um, I'm still in contact with today and we had uh, about a 20 to 25 minute conversation about just you know what my interests were what I wanted to study um, and then my questions so I did um, ask them my questions 
and they gave me the responses and I loved their responses and I think that they were pretty impressed with my questions. And then a couple weeks later, I got a phone call when I was location scouting for my senior thesis film and I was made aware that I received the Dean's Fellowship. So that was a very exciting day for me. Um, being a first generation student coming from a low income family and household, it was, it meant a lot to me to be able to receive something as high of an honor as this. Um, and later on, I felt found out that in my cohort of graduate students, there was only three of us that received the Dean's Fellowship. And then there was about eight to 10, I want to say, people that received the Graduate Fellowship. So it was a pretty small bunch of us, but it was something to be extremely proud of. And to this day, I'm still very grateful to SCAD and I've enjoyed my time immensely here since I've been a student. Now, these are the responsibilities um, as a fellow. So the Dean's Fellow, Graduate Fellows, we have responsibilities that we must complete in order to maintain our scholarship. So we work um, at the admissions office and we do different things like SCAD days or tours or you know, if they need us to write letters or make phone calls, those are kind of our responsibilities and it's on a needs basis. So. SCAD days are once a month, and what happens is the graduate students go to one place, the undergraduate students go to another, and we're just there to basically talk to families and talk to incoming students about what SCAD's about, what our programs are about, how we've enjoyed our time at SCAD, but also in Savannah, because when you come to SCAD, you are immersing yourself in the city of Savannah. You are not on a campus like a traditional university. The campus is spread amongst the entire city of Savannah, so you have to be one in the community to be a student at SCAD. And so we kind of talk about that experience and give tips and, you know, words of encouragement for students who are thinking about coming here or thinking about applying or who have applied and are trying to make a decision. Um, so that's pretty cool to be able to talk to students and uh, gain those connections pretty early on and have someone, if they need help or have questions, they can come and talk to us. So that was um, a pretty big plus. And then also we've done tours where we go to you know, a specific hall, have a little presentation, and then we go with the students on tours of the buildings and show them, you know, hey, this is what the building looks like, these are what the facilities are, this is the type of equipment and resources that you will have access to once you are a student at SCAD, and when you're a student here, you have access to free studios, industry-level equipment, that's all free um, up, so you pay up front, obviously, in your tuition, but you don't have to pay every time you want to rent out a camera or use a, a facility or you know if you want to go to your classroom and use the materials that you have there it's all completely free so that's kind of a part of what we do uh, to give back for receiving this scholarship which i think is the least we could possibly do for being awarded something so amazing so yeah that is pretty much uh my process of becoming a dean's fellow um, at SCAD and I know a lot of people are going to ask me, you know, what were my stats before I came to SCAD and how do you think that I got chosen? Um, I can give a little brief overview of that, but like I said in my reactions video, before I reacted to each school's decision, I kind of detailed um, what I offered, what, what I could offer the school and who I was as a student um, before each of those things. But just to give a brief overview, I had a 3.8 GPA in undergrad 3.89 like I graduated magna cum laude and I was a member of several different student organizations I was a member of trio student support services which is a program for disabled low-income and minority students um, I am a member of my sorority alpha kappa alpha sorority incorporated I was also a member of Movie Camera Movement, which is a film organization on my campus. I was the president of that club, and I had two on-campus student jobs where I worked at the Office of Student Engagement all three years of school. Um, I did graduate a year early. That's something that I should mention. I graduated my undergrad one year early, and I also worked as a senior academic peer advocate in our housing, which is basically someone who can provide tutoring to students who live in the resident, resident halls or connect them with resources to help them with their academics while they're in undergrad. Um, and I was heavily involved in community service in my town. I tried you know, my best to give back to the community no matter what through my sorority, but also my own personal time. Um, and yeah, I just divulged myself into my studies and gained a lot of connections with my professors and other members of the community in my respective field. I had amazing letters of recommendation from amazing mentors 
And I had a lot of support when I was in the McNair Scholars Program, which um, is a program that helps you complete undergraduate research while also preparing you for graduate school and your graduate studies. And my undergraduate research was analyzing the cinematic representation of the Dominican Republic post-dictatorship. And this was basically a program that helped me really understand what it takes to be a graduate student, the materials that I needed, um, and kind of prepared me to be ready for everything in all aspects of graduate school research, um, you know, study habits that I hadn't developed in undergrad, you know, a statement of purpose, strengthening my resume, strengthening my portfolio, all of those different things. So I do give a lot of credit to the McNair Scholars Program for um, pushing me to go to graduate school and to continue my studies, which I am extremely grateful for. So yes, that is everything uh, that I can think of about the application process. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. And you can also message me on Instagram if you have individual questions for me. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I wish everyone a lot of luck. I know that it is a uh, fall semester has started for some schools and our quarter starts in two weeks. But like I mentioned before, you can apply to SCAD anytime. And if you have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out to me or an admissions counselor at SCAD. They are absolutely amazing and can help you with any questions or comments that you may have. And yeah, um, I wish everyone a lot of luck. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Bye.